show me everything. Peace Deep Minds 255 here. What up, what up? Sorry I've been going for the last few weeks. Full time work, master's degree. Anyway, I'm back. Let's do this. So, Melty Blood looks great. Let's start with that. And while there is a little bit of concerns I have, I think for the most part it's good. When I look at Melty Blood, one of its strong points is it gives you that 90s feel. And we've been missing that from fighting games, I think, and trying to appeal to a larger audience. Developers keep losing what's fun, what makes fighting games unique. And even when they try to appeal to a larger audience, sometimes they lose fans, longtime fans, because it's, it's been dumbed down too much. But Melty Butt might be able to do this correctly. I love the background here, and it looks like they're only going to be getting better. The soundtrack sounds absolutely great, as you may or may not be able to hear in the background, but from my experience of playing the last Melty Blood, it was great. Here is the main issue, though. Is Melty Blood going to have enough characters to appeal to a wide ranging audience? And then maybe the bigger question is, are they even interested in appealing to a wider range of audience, right? Because this game has a lot of what's called waifus, and if you know what waifus are, they're basically animated female characters that people love playing with. If you ever played a MMORPG, you see plenty of them. And looking at a game like Fantasy Star 2 Online, New Genesis, or uh, Final Fantasy 14, or Tria Saber, any of these MMORPGs, there's a lot of waifu love in that area. I don't know if that transfers to fighting games though. Safe to say, if it does, and then a lot of people will pick up this game and it'll make a lot of money. And I imagine that's the purpose of making these fighting games, right? At the end of the day, it is about money. There is a business model. From what I can tell, Melty Blood is still pretty niche. It's very niche. And there's not a lot of talk, there's not a lot of exposure for it, I suppose. And one of those main issues may be that they don't have a wide range of characters to pick from that are not waifus. To be quite honest, one of the main reasons why I'm even playing the game and buying it is because of Ko Kashima. And I have uh, Kishima, forgive my uh, lack of pronunciation, but as I see it, fighting games sell the most when they have a great character roster. I know I go back to Dragon Ball Fighters a lot, but it is one of my favorite games. We can go to Marvel 2, Alpha 3, uh, Tekken, Bloody Roar, whatever fighting game you want to go back to, right? Characters are what sell the game. And when there's a terrible character roster, the game's not going to sell. Marvel vs. Capcom is a great example of this, right? Because when the X-Men were taken out and Marvel Infinite came out, not only did it look terrible, but the character roster was lacking. Tekken vs. Street Fighter, what happened there? The game came out, but the character roster was lacking. They put half of the character list behind a, a paywall. And as a result of that, that game flopped as well to the point where we don't even know what's going to happen with uh, a remake of Tekken vs. Street Fighter. Quite frankly, people don't care anymore. They've been burnt out by the Versus series. So Capcom has to do a very good job at appealing. Here, into Melty Blood. Melty Blood really has the chance of doing something great and significant right now. And you need to talk about Guilty Gear at another time in another video, but with this game, if what was ultimately gonna make or break this game, 
depending on their what they're trying to accomplish. As I said, it's going to come down to characters. I think that they, even if they imported, a, they could probably import two guest characters from maybe another fighting game. I don't know how much how that affects sales. We might have to do some research on that, but that can widen the range of the game. And then they could just be good with their own DLC cast, right? And bring them in. But I think a wide range, a, a wider range of character that is not just white fools would, would make that difference. On the other hand, they may like the money they get. They're okay with uh, releasing a new model and people pick it up and they're fine with that. So it really depends on the business model. Not too sure about that. Anyway. Um, the next thing that's going to really determine whether this game is going to be successful or not. It's going to come down to, in my opinion, fighting game mechanics. As I said, since DLC characters are what sells games, then if we have DLC characters that are one, only appealing to a certain range of players, or a certain identity of players, of people who just like waifus, then you had better make the mechanics really enjoyable. I think Guilty Gear has hit a really great point as far as that is concerned. It has enough depth if you want to get deep with it to, to entertain you and continue letting you to figure out the game, but it's also simple enough that you can pick it up and still be effective and enjoy yourself. And you have to have that in a game that does not have DLC characters that appeal to a wide range of people. And for all I know, the game comes out on the 30th and maybe it's an instant cult uh, classic. People love it, but I don't know. I don't know. If, uh, let's say, Ko Kashima, for example, he comes out, right? And I really love the character, but his fighting mechanics are so difficult to learn. The other problem, though, is, is that um, if you do only like one character and you're constantly losing, and you can't even feel like you're decent with that character. It's one thing to lose and feel like you're using the character's skills, then you can play it on yourself and say, okay, I gotta, I gotta improve. But when you're losing and you know it's because your favorite character is low tier, all right, maybe you got the initial 60, maybe, but you're not getting the rest of that DLC money. And maybe they're okay with that, I'm not really sure. Anyway, Overall, this game is on all platforms, so there's a lot of opportunities <laughs> for people to play it and enjoy it. Whether that will happen or not, well, uh, largely depend, like I said, on that character roster. This is DeepMind255 out. One.